Hello and welcome to the Thursday, March 31st, 2022 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today was certainly an interesting day if you're dealing with Java and well, after a lot of confusion, the quick summary is we do have two significant vulnerabilities for one of which a patch is available. That's a CVE 2022-2020-963. And this is a vulnerability in Spring Cloud function. For the second one in Spring Core, there is no patch available at this point. But for both vulnerabilities, there are exploits available. And yes, they're already actively being exploited. Let's start with the first one for which we do have a patch available. That's CVE 2022-22963 and it's in Spring Cloud Function. An initial report was published for this vulnerability on a Tuesday. However, it was only rated medium and it wasn't clear and exploits then have proven that, that it's actually possible to gain unauthenticated remote code execution with this vulnerability. So the CVSS score of 5.4 is probably a little bit low. Now, where it got more confusing then was that at the same time when we had uh, this new vulnerability, there was a blog post announcing another vulnerability in Spring Core and uh, that vulnerability did not have a CVE number and the Spring project in the Git uh, commit that was sort of linked uh, by this particular blog post did not really acknowledge that this is actually a vulnerability. But turns out it is an exploitable vulnerability that again leads to unauthenticated remote code execution. Spring Core is in so far uh, more significant that it's much more pop popular than Spring Cloud Function. However, that second vulnerability also has a few other dependencies. So it's not one of those relatively straight to exploit vulnerabilities, like for example, Log4j, which may give us a little more time uh, to actually address it. So you definitely should get ready for patches and in doing so probably just make sure if you're running a spring anywhere, if you have Java applications, this second vulnerability only affects you if you're using a Java 9 or later. So Java 1.9 or JDK 9 or later. If you're still on JDK 8, then you're good. You're not vulnerable. One configuration you may want to look for is a spring deployed to Tomcat. Uh, that's uh, one configuration where also uh, Boyan, uh, one of our handlers, uh, was successful in using uh, one of the published uh, exploits. A lot depends on how Spring is actually deployed, uh, whether, for example, you're using just Apache Tomcat or whether you're using the embedded Tomcat Surflet container. And uh, that really makes it uh, more complex to figure out uh, how severe this particular vulnerability is for your particular environment. And again, remember, these vulnerabilities are already actively exploited. Security company Praetorian did uh, suggest that as a mitigation, uh, you could actually create a controller advice component that will filter uh, some of the dangerous pattern via a deny list. Of course, uh, that requires you to actually then deploy that code uh, to wherever you have the vulnerable component installed. But well, uh, it's not all Java. We also got new Python scripts and uh, this time uh, DDA is helping us out parsing XLSB documents. Earlier this week, I talked about some of the macros that we have seen that use this binary format. There wasn't anything really sort of easily readily available uh, to parse them. Well, uh, DDA now has a script for you to help you parse these documents. And well, then we still have uh, devices exposed to the internet that probably shouldn't be exposed to the internet. And in this case, it's three CX phone management systems. A blog post by Freikos or Freikos, not 
sure how to pronounce this, uh, shows how these systems uh, may be exploited if you didn't patch them. And apparently there are about 200,000 of them exposed to the internet according uh, to Shodan. An update is available 3CX version 18 hotfix one built 1803461 from March 2022. So if you haven't updated yet this month, you probably do want to do that because there is now a blueprint available in how to actually get unauthenticated remote code execution on these systems. I'm just totally guessing here, but uh, probably there are more of these phones exposed to the internet than there are uh, Java applications vulnerable to one of the two uh, Java vulnerabilities I mentioned earlier. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.